Let's um, call the meeting to order and we'll begin with the Pledge of Allegiance. Pledge of Allegiance to the flag of the United States of America and to the Republic for which it stands, one nation under God, indivisible, with liberty and justice for all. I can't tell you how good it is to be uh, back with everybody in person and to see everyone doing well. Uh, you know, even as Sinsbury returns to what we uh, look, looks normal, you know, we just did some business visitations at the Sinsbury Town shops. Businesses seem to be doing well. People are getting out, but it's just important to remember that this has been just such a tragic year for our town and our country, and our thoughts remain with people who have uh, have lost loved ones, uh, both in this community and and those we know outside of this community. Uh, so as we get back together in person, um, just don't lose sight of the, uh, you know, what our community has been through over the past year. Um, we will uh, begin with public audience, and uh, for uh, public audience under this um, new way of doing things, you can participate both virtually and in person. Um, no need to pre-register if you're going to be in person. Um, if you want to join the public audience via Zoom, you can email townmanager at simsbury-ct.gov. Uh, one day in advance, and then we'll send you a Zoom link to participate remotely. Um, in the meantime, who would like to uh, join the public audience? Joan, this has been a long time coming. A long time coming, and now uh, we'll see if it works. Don't call 26 Whitcomb Drive. Yeah, I don't see my picture on me. There you are. Oh, I see you. Uh, the Board of Selectmen and Town Manager Maria Capriola cannot continue with their cancel culture agenda. Public audience comments and pictures are now controlled by the participant and viewed by the public. On June 14, 2021, Town Manager Maria Capriola had an employee recognition morning with a cold prepackaged breakfast to the main meeting room of Town Hall. Emails were sent out hastily alerting some employees and not others that a cold prepackaged breakfast is the only recognition they will receive from town manager Maria Capriola. Town manager Maria Capriola was not present since she does not feel obligated to personally recognize employees that work long hours to fulfill their cumbersome workload during the COVID-19 pandemic. At the same time, town manager Maria Capriola was at a Zoom union arbitration meeting to determine the salary of employees that hadn't received a wage increase since 2019. Many of the employees in the union have not received any pay increase since 2019, while town manager Maria Caprioli received her pay increase every year. Maria Caprioli treats our employees as indentured servants with no recognition forcing them to respond to our 24 seven demands. It appears that the Board of Selectmen are a bunch of political hacks only concerned about getting reelected and giving town manager Maria Caprioli a salary and benefits of over $200,000 that is undeserved. The Board of Selectmen have blurred the lines between being professional and political activism, catering to the whims of unhinged town manager. On June 16, 2021, there was a flag raising ceremony at town hall celebrating Pride Month, where the flag was raised under the town's American flag. Town manager Marie Caprioli was distributing flags to the attendees and deputy selectman Sean Askham and selectman Wendy McStusis made, yeah, I hope I said it right, made speeches at the podium and watched the flag raising. In a recent article in the Hartford Current, the headline stated, Suffield votes no in pride flag fight. The selectmen stated that only U.S. flags should be allowed to be flown on the town flagpoles. Now that Simsbury has endorsed raising pride flag, they also, ra they also uh, raise other flags. They should also raise other flags for Black Lives Matter, Blue Lives Matter, Don't Tread on Me, Confederate flag, Antifa, Proud Boys, POWMIA, White Supremacy flag, and old people flags. This is another indication of lowering the political lines with social correctness. Recently, the Democratic Town Committee nominated candidates for expired term of the Board of Education. Without any explanation, the nominating committee chose a candidate to replace Tara Donahue Wilra on the Board of Education after she contributed 
her time to the Board of Education for many years, making our educational per performance one of the best. It appears that the Democratic Town Committee in Simsbury have members that appear to be a cult of left-wing progressives. Most of the moderate Democrats were not nominated to the Town Committee. As a result of COVID-19, Democratic voters do not have the ability to come to the caucus as they did before to overturn the nominating committee's candidates. Only the town committee who, so, who selected these radical candidates will have the final vote. This subverts the democratic process. Simsbury residents should be alarmed by the takeover of the democratic process with left-wing progressive that could mandate Simsbury schools should include the critical race theory into the school's curriculum. Recently, a resident voiced her opinions at the response, uh, about the response time of the Simsbury <laughs> Volunteer Ambulance, responded to a call for medical attention at a public safety meeting. It appears that volunteerism has been reduced over the years and the Simsbury Volunteer Ambulance response time has been lengthened or other towns volunteer ambulance services are asked to respond causing a longer response time. Many towns in the Valley presently contract with AMR with paid staff and 24 seven response time. With paid staff, AMR ambulance service has lived up to their contractual obligations and the towns are pleased with their performance. The Board of Selectmen should have AMR, have, should have AMR present, uh, present their mission and responsibilities to the Board of Selectmen meeting to decide whether this organization would serve the town's needs better as the population increased. The only cost to the town would be to provide a building for their equipment. Now that marijuana has become legal in Simsbury Meadows Performing Arts Center, will be having concerts and activities on town property. Will the Board of Select and regulate the use of marijuana on town property? The taxes will be coming so, uh, due soon with a 38.63 mill rate the highest in the Valley. With the large increase in revenue, Simsbury has continued to be a tax and spend community. With another increase in taxes, no relief for the community. And all of my comments will be posted on Simsbury at Twitter, Jones Hub, and Facebook. Thank you for listening. It was a pleasure coming live to the Board of Selectmen and showing my pictures and my comments personally. Thank you. Thanks, George. Anybody else here like to speak to public audience? Mr. Kalishman. I'd like to express my jubilation that the meetings are now open to the public and public speaking. And I think it's uh, it's an honor for me to go back to the tradition of the Yankee town meeting where citizens could go to the town meeting and address their representatives and uh, be able to do it without any uh, anybody beating their chest saying, we, we're going to save your life so you can't participate in government. Uh, the only other thing I can add, uh, basically, is that uh, on Memorial Day, I was very disappointed that for some reason or other, uh, we didn't have a parade. And it seems that it was bandied about one, one group pointed the finger at one group and then the other group pointed the finger at the other group. In the interim, what I did was I took, I took time being that the Civil War started in 1812 at Charleston, South Carolina. I took time on that Memorial Day to go down to our monument of uh, Major Phelps and the volunteers from the Simsbury Battalion that volunteered to go to the Civil War and these men participated. And if anybody doubts the, the courage of these men, I just suggest that they go down to the Hall of Flags Look at the battle flags that these gentlemen brought back and look at some of the colors, the color that Joan spoke about, it's full of bullet holes. So it took a lot of courage to stand 25, 50 feet away from a fellow and let him take it, take it, take, take, take you apart. But the thing that I'd like to bring to your attention, that monument is a disgrace to the people and the memory of Colonel Phelps. And being a family that is the one of the uh, stead, stead pole or one of the, the founding families of Simsbury, for them, for their people in this Phelps incident, he was killed. In case was killed. 
And there's a lot of those fellows that were killed in the Civil War, never came back. And my point is that we, sh we shouldn't have to get the DAR or anybody to clean our monuments. It should be on our own. We should do it out of pride and respect. And I don't say it for myself, I say it for those brave men. And then another example is right across from where we have town government, there's a marker to the fellows that went off to Bunker Hill. And just recently we started to put a little flag there. And I just think it's time that we, if, if, if we don't know where we've been, how can we honor where we're going? And that's my, my thing. And then the only thing I can add is I'm very, uh, you know, I get a kick out of seeing the American flag. I get a kick out of the American flag flying. And the reason I get a kick out of it, if you've ever seen a division on parade, which consists of three regiments, and then each regiment consists of three battalions, and then the companies, and each company has their own colors, and they march in review, it's very impressive. And you get a real good kick out of it. And when we fly that flag, what we're flying it for, not for, not for the town, we're flying it for those fellows that are still over there, that we respect. And, that's, and no flag should fly above the American flag. I don't care who you are, right? And if you and just go to the Star Strangle Banner, that will tell you all about it if you have trouble with your history. And these are things we look to you people as our representatives to hold in place for us. When these people come along and they start trying to usurp the American flag, somebody has to stand up. And I look to my representatives to do it. And not inwardly, I know they will do it. And thank you for taking my public audience. I appreciate it. And I'm, I'm jubilant that everything is back and we're going to go back to town government. Thank you very much. Thank you. Is there anyone else here who wanted to speak in public audience? Yes. Well, I'm Sherry Byron, and I'm at 17 Preston Road right now. So uh, I did hear all of Joan's talk, but I've been volunteer with um, the uh, PAC for the past 20 years. And I've seen everything there. And um, I am 100% on the no cannabis in town. We already have a town ordinance that is not allowed transport of illegal drugs in town. It is written into the TMF rules and regulations that we do not have drugs or alcohol use. It is difficult to manage people on marijuana. I've had situations like that and I've been asked to step aside for that reason. And meanwhile, I've had people light up, uh, some of the younger people who just don't know, they, they light up their grill right next to people for oxygen. Mm -hmm. um, and so I want to bring that to their attention. The center was built by all of my counterparts, my family. My family's been here since 1933. And so I've been Girl Scout in town. I have all of this information that's going on right now. And I want to be sure that we keep our town and the bike path, which I really represent, mm -hmm. safe for everybody. And in order to do that, we do not want to have CBD oil and gummy bears offered as the side things on the trail. And we have people that took the bike ride with us. Those signs are down right at this moment. And I would like to keep them down. It happens that CBD is right next to Big Y. This is not a good thing in town. But if they're on the end of town, then the probability of being caught in town is lessened because they're on the end of town. If we need it for medicinal purposes, I can't argue that point. However, I have just returned from Denver. My children are involved in, my son-in-law is involved in police patrol. I already forwarded the governor the report that was put out by Yale 2019 and 20 that uh, damages the brain. And hopefully we will just try to lessen what has happened to the uh, people that have been 
offended because we say no but and lessen their sentences a little bit, but we certainly do not have to go through. What I started in 1978, when I had my first child at UTC, is fighting smoking in the workplace. But this, until 1986, when Senator Surgeon General Group put that out, he has passed away. However, he also has put out the edict that marijuana is harmful. And the data supports it, people at Yale support it, people at Stanford support it as a detriment to the brain. And you can go study brain science and neurology of the Harvard right now in order to um, understand that better you like. Okay, so I'm just talking about the data. If we're gonna go by data, let's go by the data. Let's keep Sims very clean. It's so refreshing to have clean air. And I've been putting on my miles on my bike since August of uh, 25th, 2020, when my car happened to pass away. So I, I'm feeling much better for it. I can still swim my mile and bike my eight miles in town, and I like that. So thank you. Thank you. Anybody else here? Public audience. Okay. Do we have anyone remotely today? No? Okay. In that case, we'll move on to uh, our presentation, which is a proclamation for Parks and Rec Month, which is July. It's appropriate timing. I'm thinking about the ribbon cutting we did at the uh, Hopbrook Landing Park. Um, the creativity that I want to celebrate of the Parks and Rec Department is one example. You know, other communities weren't able to open their pool last year. Simsbury did, I think, quite creatively. Um, if you look at the trails, being used over the past year, it's probably a, an absolute record. The golf course is hitting records. So it is without any further ado that we celebrate uh, Parks and Rec Month. And um, Tom, I just wanted to see if you had uh, any words you wanted to share. No, I, I appreciate the, the, the honor and the recognition of the town of supporting uh, the professionals on our, on our team out of the Culture, Parks and Recreation Department. And we look forward to continuing to do a high level job for the town in the coming month and years, and uh, I urge everybody to take advantage of Simsbury's uh, recreational opportunities if they can this summer. Right. And I've asked uh, Chris Peterson to read the proclamation as liaison to Parks and Rec. Thanks, Eric. Uh, just before I just read this, Tom, I, you know, my fellow board members have heard me and friends heard me, you know, publicly and privately just sort of always be marveled at the level of engagement at the volunteer level in this town. It, it's, 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 it's insane what this town gets from its volunteers. And I think people underestimate what gets done in town by a volunteer that might presumably be done by somebody they think is compensated for it. And that's from beautification to being a coach, to being a mentor, to being a tutor, to being involved in all of our boards um, and committees. And the, the Parks and Rec Commission is one of the more impressive and one of the, one of the ones that is staffed or, or staffed, as you could say, by individuals who truly care and give a lot of time to themselves. So as much as this is um, a proclamation for you and your staff, which is an amazing staff and we know you work thin, this proclamation I think should also be recognized by the current committee members and all the committee members in the Parks and Rec commission that have served in the past and those folks that um, are participating. So designation of July as Park and Recreation Month. Whereas Parks and Recreation programs are an integral part of communities throughout this country, including the town of Simsbury. And whereas our Parks and Recreation are vitally important to establishing and maintaining the quality of life in our communities, ensuring the health of all citizens and contributing to the economic and environmental well-being of community and region. And whereas, Parks and recreation programs build healthy, active communities that aid in the prevention of chronic disease, provide therapeutic recreation services for those who are mentally or physically disabled, and also improve the mental and emotional health of all citizens. And whereas parks and recreation programs increase a community's economic prosperity through increased property values, expansion of local tax base, increased tourism, the attraction and retention of businesses, <laughs> In crime, in crime reduction, and whereas parks and recreation areas are fundamental to the environmental well-being of our community, and whereas parks and natural recreation areas improve water quality, protect groundwater, prevent flooding, improve the quality of the air we breathe, provide vegetative buffers to development, and, pro and produce habitat for wildlife, and 
Whereas our parks and natural recreation areas ensure the ecological beauty of our community and provide a place for our children and adults to connect with nature and recreate outdoors. And whereas the U.S. House of Representatives, Representatives has designated July as Parks and Recreation Month. And whereas Simsbury recognizes the benefit derived from Parks and Recreation resources. Now, therefore, be it resolved by this Board of Selectmen that July is recognized as Park and Recreation Month here in the town of Simsbury. Thank, Thank you. you and before, before you applaud, Tom, is there a motion uh, effective uh, June 28, 2021, to endorse the proclamation in honor of Parks and Rec? So moved. I'll second it. All in favor? Aye. 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 All right. <laughs> Thank you, Tom. Thank you very much. I, uh, from following the agenda, I will move on to my first selections report, followed by the town manager's report. Um, the American Rescue Plan Act, known as ARPA, is delivering $350 billion to state and local governments across the country. Simsbury is anticipating more than $7 million. At our Board of Selectmen meeting on June 14th, we formed a work group with Sean Askham and Wendy Studis representing the Board of Selectmen. This work group will provide a recommendation on how this money will be invested. It's fairly restrictive how the money can be used, which is primarily intended to help communities uh, recover from the negative effects of COVID-19. It really is a rare opportunity for communities across the country to see an influx of money like this. And in Simsbury, we want to be as thoughtful and as transparent as possible. Uh, going forward, I'll be providing updates in this space on the progress of the work group and how the public can be engaged. Uh, the Center for Budget and Policy Priorities provides more information on uh, their website, I link to it. There's a lot of information out there, uh, but I really do encourage our residents to um, be engaged and I'll be sure to share information going forward. I wanted to congratulate our 2021 hometown heroes. Uh, each year, the Board of Selectmen honors our hometown heroes. These are people or volunteers with organizations who touch the Simsbury community through a deed or service. Uh, the ceremony took place on the lawn at Town Hall on June 28th, and we had the opportunity to recognize two organizations that played a critical role in the COVID-19 pandemic, the Farmington Valley uh, Visiting Nurses Association and the Farmington Valley Health District. Uh, the work of these organizations and their volunteers has been nothing short of incredible. We also celebrated the Flower Bridge Executive Committee, including Jan Lintner, Deej McKay, and Shereen Wassel. Lori George and Carolyn Clement were recognized for their work as administrators on the Simsbury Neighbors Unite Facebook group. Uh, New York University student Kevin Curian was recognized for bringing awareness about systemic racism and how it affects our community. And the Hometown Hero Committee also recognized Bob Kane for his more than 40 years of service to the Simsbury community, first at Fitzgerald's Foods and later as the owner of Kane's Market. From all of us in town, we wish Bob a happy and very well-deserved retirement. The Talcott Mountain Music Festival is back this summer. The first concert is this Friday at the Performing Arts Center. We'll feature five concerts each on a Friday. Tickets are currently on sale. Lawn seats are $25. Uh, for adults, uh, 12 and under are $5. And the box office is open uh, 10 to 5 where you can pick up tickets. And I think I'm going to leave it there. Um, it'll be emailed out tomorrow. And I'll turn it over to Maria, who has the town manager report. Great. Thank you, Eric. Good evening, everyone. Uh, first, an update on our uh, vaccination statistics. For data ending June 23rd, we now have a little over 18,000 Simsbury residents that have received at least the first dose of their COVID-19 vaccine. Um, that's about 71% of our population, uh, while 65% of our residents, so about 16,500, are now fully vaccinated. Um, we now also have some data uh, for the age group of 12 to 15 that, that was reported for the first time. And uh, just under 56% of children ages 12 to 15 have received their first dose of the vaccine, with 44% being fully vaccinated. Uh, in our age group of 15 to 44, 90, uh, just under 91% of those eligible have received their first dose, uh, with 82% being fully vaccinated. And our age group of 45 to 64, uh, just under 81% eligible have received their first dose with about uh, just, just under 75% being fully vaccinated. And of course we've reported uh, in the over 65 category that we nearly have uh, full, full vaccination throughout the community. Um, so again, very, very good progress in that regard. 
Uh, earlier for our hometown hero ceremony, I thought some very powerful statistics were shared that would be worthwhile sharing in, in the setting as well. Um, between the health district and the DNA partnering for our local um, health clinic, excuse me, vaccination clinics that were sponsored by the health district, they administered over 20,000 doses of the vaccine. That's just really remarkable. Um, they held over 70 clinics and they had 100 volunteers that helped them with that initiative. Um, so again, just a really remarkable effort. Um, folks who really cared about our community and, and helping to get folks you know, well um, through vaccination. So really just wanna thank them and, and recognize them for that effort. Uh, also of note, um, this is our very first evening of testing our new OWL uh, technology, which will allow us uh, moving forward when we're having in-person meetings um, to hold a meeting as a hybrid meeting. Um, we'll also uh, be able to move forward with fully remote meetings, which, which I'll touch on momentarily. But again, this is our very first evening um, piloting this technology live. So thank everybody for their, their patience. If in fact we experience any uh, quirks as, as we're working through the system, we've done a number of tests um, that weren't live uh, leading up to this. Um, but so far, so good. I, I think it's picking up uh, the audio and, and the visio, uh, audio <laughs> and visual very well. So uh, we'll, we'll continue to roll this technology out in a number of our other meeting spaces. Uh, we did also recently, um, through the implementer bill, learn that fully remote meetings will be permissible, at least for, uh, I believe, until the spring. Um, and there is more to come on that. There are some nuanced differences um, in terms of how those meetings will be permitted versus how they've been operating. Um, our town attorney uh, and his firm are preparing a guidance sheet for us. Um, so I would say most likely by the time of your next meeting, we'll have an updated memo for you all just in terms of the options that will be available um, and that will be available to you know, your, your fellow elected bodies and the other boards and committees and commissions in, in town. But essentially, um, you know, we can, we can do in person, we can do hybrid. Um, that could be, again, visual through something such as, you know, Owl Labs or Zoom. Um, it could be old fashioned hybrid with just a phone saucer, um, again, or fully remote. So a lot of, a lot of options that will be available, uh, available to our groups moving forward. Of our board of select and business, um, as you know, the state legislation allowing for recreational use of marijuana did pass. Um, again, our town attorney and his firm are pre uh, preparing some information for us um, in terms of how that will affect municipal services. When you think about how far reaching that is, that's you know our facilities policies, it's our um, park regulations, employee policies, it's going to affect revenue collection, our law enforcement practices, our land use regulations. So it really is going to touch many facets of, of our services. So there will be more to come. Um, and again, as we have better information and, and how that's going to impact our services as we need policy guidance, we'll certainly you know, bring that information back to you all for, for that decision-making piece. For department news and notes, uh, happy to report that the library has already received notice that they were awarded um, the grant for the, uh, the bike project, that would be the community bike. Um, as well as the pickup lockers. So that's just under $20,000 that was awarded and, and looking forward to pursuing those projects. And for the police department, I'm very pleased to announce two promotions. Um, Sergeant Matt Christian has been promoted uh, to Lieutenant that will be effective July 1st. Um, he joined our department in 2004. Um, as a patrol officer, he took on many ancillary duties such as procurement, um, supplies and training new officers. Uh, he was assigned to the detective division where he investigated some uh, very complex investigations. Uh, and then he moved on to the training sergeant position. Uh, he has just continued to excel as his uh, responsibilities and duties have uh, expanded within the department. He holds a bachelor's degree in psychology. Um, this is, I think, a really, really interesting fact about Sergeant Christian. He's certified to teach elementary education and special education. Yeah, I think that's, that's really neat. Um, and he holds numerous certifications. Um, and then we also have Officer Laurel Carrington, who is being promoted to sergeant, also effective July 1st. Um, she joined the department in 2013. Um, as a patrol officer, she became an instructor for Project Lifesaver, Women's Self-Defense, and she's also trained new officers. Um, she's an investigator with our regional accident reconstruction team and a child safety seat technician. She's also served as a school resource officer. And she's highly active with our efforts to support Special Olympics. And she, in fact, serves as a member on the state council and is our town captain for Special Olympics. Um, Officer Harrington holds an associate's degree in criminal justice and a bachelor's degree in sociology. 
Um, neat fact about Officer Harrington, she is uh, currently pursuing a master's degree in public administration. Um, so she's taking a lot of courses on leadership development, budgeting, HR, things of that nature. So really excited for her as she's nearing a completion of that coursework. Um, but, but both of these folks have just demonstrated a commitment to our community, to professionalism, and I'm confident they're both going to do very, very well in their new uh, positions and just want to wish them well and, and congratulate them both. And lastly, for social services, um, a really neat uh, program coming up next week. It's an intergenerational therapeutic event with goats. I don't know if folks have <laughs> seen this. Um, it's, it's sort of a growing and growing trend. You like goat yoga? So this, again, is a therapeutic intergenerational event for our children and families, our older residents. Um, and what's really terrific, too, is the last hour of the event is going to be reserved for our sensory-friendly families. So we do have contact information. Um, there's no cost to attend. It's going to be held at Eno on June 29th. Um, and we have a phone number and uh, an email for folks who, who would like to participate. Please share pictures yes. of this event. Yes, I want photos. <laughs> Are they baby goats? I don't know. I don't know. Baby goats. That's great. Baby goats yeah. are very cute. Yeah. Okay, thanks, Maria. Great. Thank you. Uh, as we jump into selectman action, item A, tax refund requests. Is there a motion effective June 28, 2021 to approve the presented tax refunds in the amount of $408.40 and to authorize town manager Maria Capriola to execute tax refunds? Moved. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? That motion carries. Item D is a uh, grant opportunity from the uh, Hartford Foundation for Public Giving. Uh, there's an interest in applying for a $25,000 grant from the Foundation's Greater Together Community Fund. This is money that um, all of the Foundation's 29 member communities have received. It is up to volunteers uh, who've been designated within those communities to determine how that money is spent. And uh, the proposal in front of us would be to, uh, uh, if, if awarded, um, this money would go toward uh, supporting our social services programs that assist clients with hardships, whether it be evictions, um, utilities, uh, or other basic needs. Um, this is really neat. I see Kristen uh, Formanak is with us remotely. Hey, Kristen. Hi, how are you? Um, and just as an aside, I'll make sure I get some good pictures tomorrow of the goats. <laughs> wonderful. I feel like we've got like a situation room thing going on. <laughs> Anything you would add on the grant opportunity, Kristen? Um, no, I'm just really excited at this possibility. Um, I met with the um, Hartford Foundation's board uh, the week before last and talked about the the foundation and the available funding and some of the ideas that I thought would help us out in the community. Um, and I've also shared shared this information with other nonprofits to make sure that we um, support the mission of the foundation and we get as many good letters of interest in front of them as we can to, to make Simsbury better and greater together. Um, so I'm excited. I hope that they do choose us. And as you shared, this would be additional funding for us to assist folks that are experiencing hardships, um, especially those that are potentially facing evictions. We, we have a lot of folks that had protections over the last year due to COVID and there were moratoriums on evictions and shutoffs from utilities and those are ending. So I, you know, we think that there are gonna be a lot of people that may be struggling in the months to come. Um, so I'm really excited for additional opportunities and ways to, to provide them with assistance. Thanks, Kristen. What questions do members of the board have? Okay, thank you. Thanks for the opportunity. And this is going to be in sort of a lengthy motion because of the multiple parts to this. But is there a motion effective June 28, 2021, to submit a letter of interest to the Simsbury Greater Together Community Fund, Hartford Foundation for Public Giving, for the purpose of requesting funds to assist with our residents in need, and also to submit the grant application to the Simsbury Greater Together Community Fund for the purpose of requesting funds to assist our residents in need, and also to accept the Simsbury Greater Together Community um, Fund grant should it be awarded, and authorize uh, Maria Capriola, town manager, to execute all documents related to the grant award. So moved. Second. Any further conversation? All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Thank you, Kristen. 
Um, item C is a proposed public <coughs> gathering permit for a comedy series at the Simsbury Meadows <laughs> Performing Arts Center. Hmm? I can't get over this, and Missy just appears on our screen. <laughs> 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 Missy, like this performing is arts. <laughs> <laughs> this is great. Um, Missy, what can you share about, um, about the comedy series this new this year? So this is brand new for us, um, as you can gather. Um, response, the community wanted comedy. So we worked with uh, local comedian Linda Belt to put together a whole series. Actually, my colleague Rebecca Castellani is leading this charge for us. Um, so it's the first three Wednesdays in July. Um, we would love to see you out there. Concerts start, or the comedy shows start at seven and run to about nine. We'll have food, <coughs> kind of a no outside food or beverage situation, but we're going to have full bar, um, food vendors, non alcohol, et cetera, available on site. Um, and we're really excited about it because we've been longing to take some risk ourselves and do our own programming. And this, this is the year to do it. Thank you. Any questions from the board? I have a question, and I want to see if this works, if I come up on the screen. Um, so in the I was just talking about the sign-offs. Normally, we're always last in the sign-offs for the, the thing, and this time there aren't any sign-offs, so if somebody could just explain. Um, um, I'd be happy to explain as the facilitator for the town. Um, I do have all sign-offs um, accrued from all um, the departments. The only sign off is pending the inspection of the vendors from the Farmington Valley Health District, which there was no concern of. They're familiar with the vendors. It's just a matter of process. Okay. Thank you. Any other questions? Is there a motion effective June 28, 2021 to approve the public gathering application on behalf of the Simsbury Meadows Performing Arts Center and authorize the issuance of the public gathering permit for the Simsbury Performing Arts Center comedy series pending Farmington Valley Health District approval of food vendors. So moved. Second. All in favor. Aye. 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 And item D is another uh, public gathering permit, this one for the U.S. Uh, Coast Guard Band. And this one's actually going to be a series of three concerts? Yes, correct. So they reached out to us um, um, in the winter. Um, and wanted to do just a free concert. They were aching to get back out there because of COVID. Um, and so reached out to us because we are an outdoor performing arts center. So they're doing it completely free of charge and it's a free and open concert for the community. Um, and you have all the information there. You can go to our website and register to attend just so that we know how many people will be attending. We do ask that you register, but they will be out there Sunday, July 11th at two, Sunday, July 9th at two and Sunday, September 12th at two. Any questions? Um, I, I, again, if I can comment, all appropriate sign-offs from the uh, Public Gathering Committee have been acquired for this application. Thank you, Tom. Okay. You're welcome. Is there a motion effective June 28, 2021 to approve the Public Gathering application on behalf of the Simsbury uh, Meadows Performing Arts Center and authorize the issuance of the Public Gathering Permit for the U.S. Coast Guard Band performances? So moved. Second. Okay. Aye. Aye. Great. And uh, lastly, uh, item E is a public gathering permit for the Kinetic Ukes performance. I did look them up online. We're talking about ukuleles, of course. Correct. Anything, anything you would share there? <laughs> they are actually a local community group who typically would have rehearsed in the library, but in the age of COVID, took their rehearsals outside to the Performing Arts Center and we are working with them to put together, hopefully, a uh, ukulele festival next year um, and so because they've been rehearsing they said well we'd love to put on a free community concert so they're going to do like a one hour concert three to four on uh, July 18th for the community. Any questions on the ukes? Okay. <laughs> Is there a motion effective June 28, 2021 to approve the public gathering application on behalf of the Simsbury Meadows Performing Arts Center and authorize the issuance of public gathering permit for the kinetic ukes performance? So moved. Okay. All in favor? Aye. 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 Okay. Uh, thank you, Miss. Oh, hold, 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 hold on, hold on, hold on, hold on. Hey, just a quick question. You did a faint ignorance, but um, <laughs> what is the determining filter for outside food and beverage or not? So, because I would probably wield that matter for comedy series with my own cooler, not knowing. Um, so what is it just, is it who the sponsor is? Is what's offered? What's the different events 
So the only, um, typically the only events that are no outside food or beverage are anything that we put on that's a paid ticketed event. Um, this does Talcott Mountain Music Festival because it's been grandfathered for years and years is a your own food and beverage. And typically okay. any free community concert where you're not necessarily gonna get a large amount of people is also a bring your own food and beverage situation. But any kind of paid event like the comedy <coughs> music series, September Feast, et cetera, typically is a no outside food or beverage situation because that's when we're bringing in the food vendors. Okay, <laughs> great. I guess I think it would happen to the one itself. I just sort of growing up and being here since we've had the talking about the festival since forever, since way down the road, it sort of all falls in the back from you know, so events. Uh, organized and I think everything is in Talcum Mountain. Right. You're not the only one. It's something we're working on in terms of branding. Yes. We are the Talcum Mountain Music Festival. It's just not the case. So Darius Rucker too, no outside food or beverage. Well, yeah, yeah, that well, you'll miss yeah. America. We can uh, for uh, we can the stipends for the town, town from the food vendors. We can answer that question another time. Thank you. Any other questions? Yeah. Thanks, Nessie. Thank you. Item F is a license agreement for a storage shed at Weetog Park. This would be for the Simsbury Avon Youth Football Football League, um, which would be replacing their current storage shed with a larger one at Weetog Park. Uh, this agreement would be quite similar to the hockey uh, storage shed at the farm. Uh, Todd, anything you would add to this? No, that's that's well said. It's just where we formalize these agreements as the new sheds are getting replaced or installed. Um, using the same template as we go forward, and and they're just again they're just replacing their existing shed, and they're going to remove it at their own cost and replace it with a larger shed, shed a similar design. Are there any questions? Is there a motion effective June 28, twenty twenty one, to authorize Town Manager Maria Capriola to execute the proposed license agreement for a storage shed at Weetog Park with Simsbury Avon Youth Football League Inc. I'll make a motion. Second. All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? All right, that motion passes. Hey, Eric, I'm sorry, the clerk just um, asked if people making the motion at the second, making the second, mm -hmm. just state their name, just so we can capture it. So, Jackie Battis, I made a motion. Chris Peterson seconded it. And I'll do my best to uh, say their names out loud so uh, we can capture that. Thank you, Melissa. Thank you. Uh, item G is a letter of support to rebrand the Farmington Canal Heritage Trail. Um, so this is the 81 mile trail that stretches from New Haven to Northampton. And the New Haven to Northampton Canal Greenway Alliance represents seven nonprofit groups that make up the trail. And the group is looking for a letter of support from each community that the trail runs through. Um, this name change is supported by the Farmington Valley Trails Council. I reached out to get feedback from our um, local bike community. I have not found anyone who is not in favor of this idea. Um, and I know that a number of communities just around us have already given them that letter. Um, so I haven't found a reason not to do this, but I wanted to see what questions members of the board had. I don't have a question, but I wanted to comment that on Saturday, a gentleman on a unicycle was riding down the bike path on Iron Horse with a sign on his back that said New Haven to Northampton. So I guess that kind of endorses this <laughs> yeah. rebranding. Jory, have you heard any feedback? Not in favor of this? No, not. so far we've just heard um, from some of our advocates within the cycling community and our local trails council that they are supportive of the rebranding. Um, one question we wanted to clarify is that obviously our trail signage doesn't reference the same, mm -hmm. but there isn't you know, a required time frame for changing out the signage. So as you know, our signs, you know, reach a, a useful life and we need to replace them. We'll certainly do that and include the new the new name. Okay. Any other questions? That's what I was going to ask. Yeah. <laughs> Is there a motion effective June 28th, 2021 to authorize the town manager's office to send a letter of support to rebrand the Farmington Canal Heritage Trail to the New Haven and Northampton Canal Greenway? Wendy Max Davis moves that. <laughs> I'll second. Jackie Battis. All in favor? Aye. 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 Uh, item H is acquisition of easements for bridge projects. Uh, the town is undertaking a series of bridge projects, the Firetown Road Bridge, 
and the Barn Door Hills uh, Road over uh, Thistle Brook. Um, for these projects, there's three temporary construction easements that are needed and one permanent easement. Um, the property owner, McLean Game Refuge, has agreed to grant these easements at no cost to the town. Is there anything that staff would add before I open it up for questions? Oh, no, I don't Jack. think so. Hi, how you doing, Eric? Uh, no, I don't think so. It's just that we've been working hard on this since 2018. It's a slow process through the state uh, DOT. And uh, this is one step. And hopefully once this gets uh, consummated, we'll uh, move forward with construction. Any questions for Jeff? Is there a motion effective June 28, 2021 to authorize town manager Maria Capriola to execute the temporary and permanent easements associated with the bridge rehabilitation projects? Uh, Firetown Road Bridge over an unnamed brook, bridge number 04549, and Barn Door Hills Road Bridge over Bissell Brook, bridge number 04550 project. So moved, Sean. Seconded, Chris Peterson. Any further conversation? I'm going to quiz you on those bridge numbers. All in favor? Aye. 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 <laughs> I'm assuming proposals and name that bridge. <laughs> I know. Um, item I. So the next set of motions are procedural motions associated with the Meadowood acquisition. And this next one is the acceptance of a grant from the State Department of Agriculture and a supplemental appropriation um, for more than $877,000 to support the purchase of the Meadowood property. As we work toward a closing in late summer, um, the town can be a recipient of these funds. And these were expected to be part of the acquisition. They don't impact the town's uh, financial contribution. Anything you would add, Maria? Perfect. Okay. Were there questions on this item? I have a question. Um, so we knew, we knew these grants were coming. You know, these are the ones in the chart. And I, were they supposed to come to us and then get budgeted back to TPL or were they supposed to go directly to TPL? Is that a change or is that just always how it's been? Sure, so a mix. Um, so okay. this particular grant from the State Department of Agriculture, um, again, we you know, had a sense, I think back around March when we presented the updated funding model that we thought that the number would land somewhere around here. This is slightly more than we thought, but in the neighborhood of, of where we thought we would land it. Um, and so TPL for this particular grant, they were actually the applicant. Um, but just to help us with closing and putting the funds into escrow, um, the state said that they can essentially just send the funds directly to us. And then we can, you know, again, just have all the funds commingled for, for the escrow on, on closing day. Um, so essentially, again, this would just be us taking in the funds and then appropriating that amount of money to uh, to the project, similar to what we just did for the OSWA grant recently. Yeah. But that was a little different with the OSWA grant. We needed to be the applicant. Um, so we were the official applicant and then the funds were directly coming to us. This is a little different in that TPL was the applicant, right. but they can send the funds to us for closing. Okay, thanks. Yeah, no problem. Any other questions? Is there a motion effective June 28, 2021 to accept the approximately $877,500 from the State Department of Agriculture and or the Trust for Public Land to be applied towards the acquisition of Meadowood and also to authorize Town Manager Maria Capriola to execute all documents related to accepting these funds and uh, further to approve the supplemental appropriation for the Meadowood's purchase as presented and recommended its approval to the Board of Finance. I move that. Sean? Second it, Wendy. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. Item J is a referral to the Planning Commission. So there are existing conservation easements on this property uh, that would be replaced by new conservation easements. And Maria, please correct me if I'm not capturing this correctly, but this item is a referral to the Planning Commission to get an advisory opinion on whether that move is consistent with the plan of conservation development. I think that's a good description. Bob, okay. would you want to add anything to that? I thought Eric covered it nicely. Uh, yes, and also the referral should include the acceptance of the new conservation easements. Both will receive, both will need 824 reports. I think it says that in the agenda item, but just to be clear. Are there questions? Is there a motion effective June 28th, 2021 
uh, pursuant to uh, Connecticut General Statutes 8 24, to refer to the Planning Commission the release of existing conservation easements associated with the Meadowwood subdivision approval. Move that, Sean. Second, Chris. All in favor? Aye. 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 And item K is um, scheduling a public hearing for the release of the existing conservation easements for Meadowwood. Um, see if there's a motion and then see if there's questions. Is there a motion effective June 20? Uh, excuse me, and the acceptance of the new conservation easements. Apologies. Um, I'll reread re -read the motion and then and amend it with that. Um, is there a motion effective June 28, 2021? pursuant to CGS 8-24, to refer to the Planning Commission the release of the existing conservation easements associated with the Meadowwood subdivision approval and accept the, the new easements? Mm -hmm. like yes. Sean said Sean. Second and said Chris. <laughs> All in favor. Aye. Okay. And then item K, is there a motion effective June 28, 2021 to set a public hearing to receive public comment on the release of existing conservation easements and acceptance of new conservation easements for the Meadowwood property for 5.30 p.m. on Thursday, July 15, 2021. Move that, Sean. Second, Jackie. All in favor? Aye. 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 And item L is the authorization for the town manager to sign as a co-applicant for the Meadowwood resubdivision application is there a motion effective June 28, 2021, um, for the town manager to authorize the town manager to sign the Meadowwood resubdivision application on behalf of the town as a co applicant? Move that, Sean. Second, Chris. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item M is the proposed amendments to the Historic District Commission ordinance. Um, the town has been considering changes to the ordinance governing the historic district commission. A uh, public hearing was held at our last meeting. Um, uh, just a couple of the substantive changes being proposed. Um, one would be for our ordinance to more closely reflect, reflect the state statute, making residency requirements more lenient in terms of the commission members having to live in the district. Also, another proposed change reduces the quorum requirements to having three members as opposed to four. Was there anything before we open up for discussion um, that staff wanted to add on this item? I wanted to see if um, the board would be uh, ready to move forward with a vote. I am, I just, just for the record, I did talk to a member of the HTC and um, one of the concerns of theirs was the length at which it takes to approve applications sometimes due to quorum issues and filling spots. So this was viewed at least by this member as a good change. Um, and they cited an example where an HVAC approval took beyond the period where you would use the HVAC um, in that summertime uh, previously as, as an example where uh, to no individual fault, but again, lack of foreign issues, uh, they weren't able to respond to a resident in what I would argue is an appropriate amount of time. So this seems to be a good change again to, to, to minimize those types of situations. Thanks, Sean. Anything else anyone wanted to add? Is there a motion effective June 28th, 2021 to adopt the proposed revisions to chapter 25 of the Simsbury Code of Ordinances? Oh, I, I, I do have a question. Let me just read it and then I'll, uh, <laughs> and then I'll turn it over to you. <laughs> Historic District Commission as presented, which shall be effective 21 days after publication in the newspaper, having circulation within the town of Simsbury, and also to authorize a summary of the adopted ordinance be published. Someone moves that and seconds it. I'll turn it over. To I'll move that, Ms. Sean. I'll second it, Wendy. I press. Discussion. Oh, thank Discussion. you. Uh, I did, I'm, I have no dog in the hunt, but uh, or fight, whichever maybe. Um, but I'm sure that the 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 residents of that area were comfortable with someone you know, that that consideration. I understand there's a need to have involvement, but they understand that now they won't, don't have to have local representation, which is. They're giving up something from to somebody from outside, so to speak. And I imagine that was well thought out and discussed and presented. Sure, I can elaborate. So um, under state statute, there are um, certain residency requirements for a certain number of the members on the commission. 
but our ordinance had additional residency requirements. Which, a little heavier. A little yeah. heavier, exactly, which was leading to some of the, the quorum and membership challenges that Sean spoke to. Mm -hmm. So um, essentially now our ordinance would mirror state statute and there still would be some members of the Historic District Commission that mm -hmm. also need to reside in the district. It'll just mirror state statute instead. Cool. All in favor? We <laughs> <laughs> should call it. Yeah. All in favor? Aye. 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 Um, item N is uh, the IDPO successor collective bargaining agreement. Um, so this is the um, agreement with uh, local number 458, which represents our police officers. The union ratified this temporary agreement last week. It would be in effect basically July 1st um, until this time in 2024. Um, before I ask Maria to provide a summary, I wanted to um, thank our staff, um, thank our uh, police officers and our police commission for all being part of this process. Um, I just thought it would be um, good for a uh, level of transparency to just go over the highlights of this agreement and what's different. Sure, yeah, I'd be happy to take that, thank you. Um, so this would be a three-year uh, successor collective bargaining agreement to the primary agreement between the parties, but also a three-year successor agreement for our pension agreement as well. Um, this group is a little uh, unusual in that the pension uh, benefits are a they are technically a completely separate um, collective bargaining agreement between the parties. So this again would be um, successor agreements for, for both agreements, uh, both three years in duration. Um, regarding the pension agreement, um, we uh, did not propose any changes. So you may recall that um, we did go to arbitration regarding um, the pension contract. We did just get that award just last June, so we're just coming up on the year. And there were very um, substantial um, changes to uh, both the DD plan as well as uh, introducing the DC plan for that bargaining group. Uh, that just went into effect for new hires as of last year. Uh, and the estimated savings um, for those plan changes were quite substantial, uh, estimated at about a million dollars over 15 years. So that was a, a fairly significant agreement for us. Um, and again, that was just less than a year ago. So again, felt that this, there was really no need at this particular you know, point in time for any changes to that agreement beyond, again, the arbitration award. Um, what we also have before us, um, again, it is uh, the uh, three-year agreement. Um, we really, this time, um, focused on uh, wages and health insurance. And the union was amenable um, to agreeing to the um, health insurance plan design changes that uh, ASME employees have accepted, the dispatchers employees have accepted, and that our non-union staff transitioned to recently as well. Um, and so again, that would be um, pharmacy and medical management, uh, plan management changes, as well as some changes to the medical insurance co-pays. Um, our estimated savings for this particular bargaining group um, for those negotiated uh, health insurance changes would be about just under $36,000 a year. Um, and then also we negotiated general wage increases with this particular group. Um, that are uh, just a little bit higher than what we were seeing, about uh, 0.15 higher than what we were seeing um, for some negotiated settlement data averages. But again, um, based on the savings of the pension award, um, that was fairly substantial um, and, and a bit of an offset there. Um, but I do think that the agreement um, is you know, fair and reasonable to both sides. Uh, we do have funds for the general wage increase budgeted in contingency. That is something that we try to do responsibly as we're working through the budget process. Um, and again, just would recommend uh, to you all its ratification. The union did ratify these agreements on June 24th, so Thursday. Okay. Thank you, Maria. Are there welcome. questions? More of just a, a commenter is, um, you know, I know there's been a lot of discussion at budget time at the tri board about union contracts in three years and, and perhaps a misunderstanding of, of how those all work. You know, and Maria, if you could just comment, uh, when, you, when you talk about recent awards, you're not talking about one or two comparative awards. You're talking about a, a, a large body of awards across the entire state, right? Yes, that's correct, right? So as, you know, we start to see more and more contracts um, being negotiated, um, you know, sometimes we'll see sample sizes in the hundreds. Um, and then, you know, perhaps if we're really looking far out, you know, maybe our sample size is 50 or so. Mm -hmm. But generally, we're, we're looking at, I would say, a pretty good sample size in terms of what we're 
we're seeing for um, negotiated settlement data, whether we're looking at the average or the mode. Mm -hmm. um, and again, generally what we're seeing um, for some of those out years, it's more around the 2.35 number. Um, typically arbitrated settlements, it's a, it's a much smaller you know, number. Um, you might see simple sizes in any given year maybe between five and 10. Mm -hmm. um, and arbitrated numbers do tend to be lower on the general wage increase and they are seeing arbitrated settlement wage increases a little lower in the 1.9% range. Um, and then typically they'll also share data um, in what's called the CCM data reporter about any contracts in which um, a union agreed to a zero. It's pretty unusual unless you're in a financially distressed community um, based on the ten ability to pay factors that are used during arbitration. Um, and, I, and I know I sent that data to you all recently, mm -hmm. um, but I think in the last year, I want to say there were maybe less than less than 10, I think, zeros that were awarded out of sample size was in, in the hundreds. So. And from a comparative basis, certainly no communities that would look like ours from a financial standpoint, right? That would be in those zero. No, right? no, you know, typically again, it would have to be something catastrophic. Um, you know, for example, after the, the collapse of the housing market in 2008, a lot of the pilot communities were hit really hard because the state um, one month into the fiscal year took away very large sums of money, right? right? So a lot of unions came back to the table and said like, okay, you know, for this year to get us to this year, we'll take zeros. Right. Um, but again, it would usually take something sort of catastrophic of that nature, some sort of really large unexpected revenue mm -hmm. loss to see a community of our demographics that would take a zero. Yeah. And the only reason I bring that up is, is, is more of an education, right? That, that this is a, a, a nuanced process. You can look at a low, you can look at a high, but there's a reality for towns like ours in the state of Connecticut of generally where we're going to be, right? Um, and you know that's the nature of legislation and binding arbitration, et cetera. And again, it, there are folks that will, will get lower, right? Well, what does get lower cost us, right? And first and foremost, it can cost us morale and connectivity to our police department, um, who I think has done a, a pretty damn good job uh, through a pretty, pretty challenging year and in many years. Um, and it doesn't mean we shouldn't get a fair wage um, agreement with them and save our taxpayers money, but there is a, a factor of some of these folks live in town and they are part of our community. I mean, and the second is again, the financial reality of we could fight, but do you win? And what does winning cost you both from a legal standpoint, a staff time standpoint? And then, you know, do you win? Okay, you win at 2.29. So if that costs you a hundred grand in legal fees and staff time, you actually lost, right? So the, there's a reality here of, of what folks might think winning is. So um, a long way of saying there's never a perfect number, um, but there's a, a realistic number out there. And to me, in, 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 in talking to you, looking at these, doing these a number of times, this seems to be a, a realistic and, and fair number, I think both for the community and for the officers that were, you know, our employees of this town. Mm -hmm. so. Make sure is there uh, anything else anyone wants to I, add? I just want to a reminder, are, do, are they, uh, the police department, is it the defined benefit plan or do they have a choice? Yeah, so new hires have a choice, okay. um, but new hires also have uh, a defined benefit plan that was restructured differently. So um, some highlights of, of um, the new tier, essentially, that they would be going into. There's a longer vesting period. Um, there are more years of service that are required before an individual can be eligible to retire. Uh, we increased the age in which somebody is eligible to retire. Uh, we changed the multiplier for each creditable year of service from two and a half percent to two percent. Mm -hmm. um, also, our current plan for the existing hires, it was uh, based on 110 percent of their salary as opposed to their base salary. Um, we also won that issue in arbitration, so it is now just based on their base salary at 100 percent of salary. Um, I think those are probably some of the, the key highlights. So again, the DB plan as it exists for the public safety unit is now structured very differently for those employees moving forward who do do choose that plan, um, but we do have um, the DC plan um, as an option. Um, and we do actually have uh, a member of the department that has elected that. So um, again, we felt that was important for, you know, those particular employees to have a choice because we do hear from some folks that they do want that portability and they want to control their own, you know, own investments and things of that nature. So um, yes, yeah, so we do officially have a, a Please, you know, number who's in DC. Great. That's a good question. Thank you. Yeah, you're welcome. I probably know it was a year ago. Yeah. <laughs> Any other questions? Thank you. Is there a motion effective June 28, 2021, to authorize Town Manager Maria Capriola to execute the proposed successor collective bargaining agreement between Town of Simsbury and IBPO Local Number 458 and its successor pension agreement 
between the two parties, which shall enter into effect from July 1, 2021, and expire on June 30th, 2024. I'll move that, Sean. I'll second it, Wendy. Any further discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 Item O, our vacation carryover requests. Uh, town manager is recommending uh, uh, that we approve uh, five employees who have um, vacation days that we carry over into the next fiscal year with a couple stipulations. This is something that we uh, do every year. Um, in the packet, it points out that um, most of these folks had trouble taking their vacation time because of, uh, you know, extra work because of COVID. Were there any questions on this? Is there a motion effective uh, June 28th, 2021? to approve the vacation carryover requests as presented in the table below and requiring selectman action. Further stipulate that the approved excess vacation days must be used on or before December 31st, 2021, and the unused approved excess vacation days still on the books as of January 1, 2022 will be forfeited. Should the employee leave service for any reason, including but not limited to retirement or resignation, they will not be paid out for the approved unused excess vacation days authorized by the board of selectmen. So moved, Wendy. Second, Jackie. Any other questions? All in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? That motion carries. Um, item P is a um, proposed omnibus um, amendments to the code of ordinances. This is basically identifying all of the places in our town policies, our resolutions, our charter, et cetera, that reference, that charter, not the charter. Yeah, that's the charter. so serious. Charter's locked, that's a big deal. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> I'm listing out all the places that list first selected versus town manager. <laughs> but we're not amending the charter here at all. No. Got it. Um, in 99.9% .9 of the cases, when the town, when it references first selectman, it's really referring to the town manager because it hasn't, we haven't, you know, formally made that change in all of those documents. Um, Maria, this is something that um, you suggested we initiate, so I'll let you say a few words about it. Sure, thank you. Yeah, so it's um, something that Bob assisted with, and, and I think we've had some really good conversations around, and I, and I may defer to Bob as well, but um, realizing that just as a matter of housekeeping, we do have so many um, that reference the person in the capacity of the chief executive. So although as an organization, we had updated the charter in 2017, um, some of this other cleanup just hadn't happened. Um, and so um, again, that was probably a good idea to, again, um, where the first left person is referenced as the chief executive or the HR director, that it would make sense to just from a, a wording perspective to clean that up to make sure it reflected town manager. Um, Bob, I think did a great job preparing and finding all of the different places um, where that's located. I think at the end of the day, there were over seven, 70, 70 locations <laughs> that Bob had found. And Bob, I don't know if you want to add anything to it. Yeah, what I did is I did a word search in Muni code of all town ordinances and printed out a master list uh, of all references to the first selectman, um, and there were about 120 of those. And then I had to check each one against the charter to make sure that it was in fact an appropriate change, that the charter change would require an ordinance change. In some cases it wasn't. Um, in some cases the ordinance or the policy really meant the first selectman um, in, as referenced in the new charter. So those were left off the list, but in virtually every other case, in every other case, the reference in the ordinance or the policy to first selectman was a, was uh, out of date because it was referencing the first selectman when that position was the chief executive officer. And in some cases, the statute requires the chief executive officer to, to have the role and the ordinance um, need to, needs to be changed to conform with the uh, general statutes. Uh, so the list that we put together and we reviewed um, is the list that should be uh, form the basis of a, an amendment to the code of ordinances and also an amendment to uh, the personnel rules and policies and some other things. Uh, so we think we've got them all and we think they're all um, where they should be. Um, and the ordinance changes will require a public hearing. The policy changes will not. So yeah. Bob... This is just an amendment. We do not have to open the charter. No, no, no. 
No, this is a, an amendment to the ordinances to conform to the recently adopted charter, where, which contained a, a change of uh, form of government. Just wanted to clarify. Thank you. Yep. Yep. So the action we'd be taking tonight would be scheduling a public hearing. Were there other questions immediately? Bob, just chapter 120, peddlers and hawk, hawkers. <laughs> <laughs> yep. no. just, just kidding. It's uh, obviously yep. it's very, very thorough. <laughs> that one's that one's by statute, by the way. The peddlers and hawkers statute requires the chief executive officer to play that role. I have a question for Bob. And so I, I, I look through these and I know this is really a housekeeping thing, right? And the only thing that stood out to me was in the local emergencies. Um, it, it's, if there's an emergency and we have to issue an EOC or, or create an EOC, it mm -hmm. starts with the manager and then goes to the deputy and then it goes to the board of selectmen. Mm -hmm. Is it assumed if it goes to the board of selectmen, they're going to the first or the deputy so that we're not looking for one of six of us to initiate an EOC? Mm -hmm. You know what I mean? We, we would have to vote, I believe, is how that's in, interpreted. Right. Right. Now, right. The board of selectmen can't act individually. Uh, you'd have to vote uh, collectively. Yeah, yeah, but that one is another one that that comes out of the statute. The statute references the chief executive officer of the town. Yeah, previously, right? They we used to be the what the first select person, and then we could do that. I think the chairman of public safety had some ability in prior. But but Wendy, your point is right. Is we we we, we would have to figure out how to have a meeting. And, Vote to yeah, you'd have to, you could, and that, if that ever arose, you could have an emergency meeting because of the nature of the action you'd be taking. That's how we put it. Is there a motion effective June 28, 2021 to set a public hearing to receive public comment concerning the omnibus amendment to the code of ordinances to change the first selected references the town manager, where appropriate, is to be set for 6 p.m. Monday, July 12, 2021, and to refer the proposed amendments to the personnel rules and regulations to personnel subcommittee for review. I'll move that, Wendy. I was going to say Chris. <laughs> Second, says Peterson. <laughs> Any other discussion? All in favor? Aye. 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 That, uh, concludes selectman action. Under appointments and resignations, is there a... Uh -huh. We do. There wasn't an amendment. No. Yeah. No appointment. Yeah. yeah oh, I'm sorry. No, you turn. Action. Forget it. Go on. Is there a motion effective June 28, 2021, to appoint Evan Shen as a student representative, a regular member of the Spirit Council, with a term to expire on December 6, 2021. Move that, Sean. Second amending. All in favor. Aye. 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 Any feedback on the minutes from either June 11th or June 14th? No. Okay. What um, selectman liaison or subcommittee reports do we have tonight? Looking at you, Wendy. Well, I don't have any. I was okay. just gonna, because the Board of Ed now doesn't have meetings through the summer mm -hmm. and neither does aging and disability. So I have a vacation this summer. Um, but I just did want to mention that Sean and I did meet um, to kick off the work group um, you know, as we did an agenda setting and planning, and we have some plans to reach out um, to Amy and then figure out where to go from there. And we hope to present something um, in August just to kind of outline a process that we've been talking about for the ARPA meeting. Mm -hmm. Great. Oh, wait. Thank you, Melissa, for sharing. Melissa is going to share ARPA information under the Board of Selectmen page. And talk about the work group so that people will have access to all the ARPA links because there's multiple links. So thank you, Melissa. Great. Any other reports tonight? Chris. On the theme of Parks and Rec, Tom, you want? <laughs> so well, I guess like, he can correct my facts after the fact. Um, at the, the meeting, there was a committee meeting uh, the night and uh, a couple of interesting points came up. I just think that were worth mentioning. Um, this is relative to 2019 numbers. 
that uh, pool revenue is significantly up over 2019 uh, compared to the year. Um, uh, swim lessons are all sold out effectively for the for the summer. Camps are all sold out effectively for the summer. Staffing is at 100 percent for of what is um, for seasonal employees. Um, golf uh, is well over 2019's numbers. And uh, golf, as it relates to the last year, is, is significantly up to the tune of a quarter million dollars of revenue going in. So um, overall, very positive um, picture coming out of Sinsbury Farms and the Parks and Rec community and programs as a whole. So people not just not only using it last year, but this momentum and energy hopefully is carrying forward and people continue to utilize all the wonderful services we have in, in town. And the restaurant is up and running yeah. up with the farms with a couple little hiccups early on, which is understandable. But the feedback I understand is quite favorable and people are quite happy with not only the food coming out, but the experience of the operator. So that's that's a big mm -hmm. win uh, yeah. going forward. So. Actually, Chris, I thought your update was going to be a little different. Uh, at that meeting, they also approved pickleball lines. I, I fell off the meeting, to be honest, like 655. There was a healthy discussion <laughs> down on the the, uh, the, uh, the conundrum of pickleball, uh, pick up, taking up, and uh, lack of uh, equitable space uh, potentially. But I think moving forward in uh, what is an imperfect solution to try to get to a, a more better, a more perfect solution in the future. Um, but it's exciting to see that energy and everybody trying to work together to bring bridge as much of the folks needs as possible. So there is pickleball being lined um, on some of the ancillary uh, courts that weren't used before. So that was a highlight. Great. Great. Any other uh, announcements? Um, anything under communication anyone had questions about? Is there a motion to adjourn? So moved. Sean. Second, Second. Jackie. <laughs> Jackie. All in favor. Aye. Aye. Everybody. Yay. Good to see everybody. That was so much fun. <laughs> <laughs>